Be sure to comment, subscribe, and click the notifications bell. One, two, three. Hey, what's up, guys? JD Venom here, part of Venom Nation Wrestling. This is the Getting Over podcast for this week on June the 30th, 2017. Before we begin here today, just want to go let you guys know that I understand I did not make any reviews this week. If you do follow me on Twitter, you will know that I have not made reviews. And I announced to you guys on Monday afternoon that I was not going to be doing reviews this week due to working late. I am now working a shift at work between 3 p.m. and midnight. Obviously, that's during the times of Monday Night Raw and SmackDown and NXT. Um, so these shows here are pre-recorded. Um, I, I'm not recording them right after a uh, vent because this is a, this is a fucking podcast. Um, so I'm doing this right now, late, late, late at night right now, uh, as we speak. Um, so that's that. That's why you have not seen Raw, SmackDown, or NXT reviews. I will keep you guys up to date. Maybe I'll have some information for you guys tomorrow with the top 10 on the status of those reviews. Um, but today, on the Game Over Podcast, we got some news on John Cena versus Roman Reigns, the new main event, possibly, for WrestleMania 34. What's going to happen with Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar? I got some details for you guys with that. Also, as well, um, got some information on some new male WWE talent that WWE has their eye for to come into NXT after the May Young Classic. Also, Raw and SmackDown viewership as well for this week. And also as well, we got some more names confirmed for the May Young Classic. Uh, if you guys are new to the channel, be sure to leave a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Be sure to follow me on Twitter. And like the Facebook page, where both links are down below. I'm not saying that just to say it, guys. I'm saying that that's how you keep up to date with me. If you guys are wondering, well, where, where was Venom at? Where's Venom at? Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Facebook. I leave you guys, um, you know, information on there. I'll keep you guys up to date on if I'm doing a review or not. And also, as well, you can keep, you know, you can also tweet me. Uh, I'm going to be on Twitter for, like, Raw and SmackDown and the pay-per-views and stuff. But uh, you can tweet me there, and um, yeah, if you want to talk to me on Twitter or leave me uh, any anything on there, you want to uh, give me any news, uh, I'll be sure to definitely look over that on Twitter. So that is that. Uh, today's show is gonna be pretty short, guys. I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I don't even have a boy. Oh, I do have a. I real I do have I do have a bay of the week. I do have a boy of the week, and I do have a this week in wrestling for you guys as well. Um, so yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna get into that right now. So, we're gonna start today with our Raw and SmackDown, uh, report. And, uh, I'm talking about the actual viewership. So, Raw this past week was headlined by a number one, uh, contender's gauntlet match. Drew 2.9 million viewers. This is down just only 4% from last week. So, it did go down last week from... Uh, from last week's uh, 3.1 million, so they lost 200,000 viewers. I'm not gonna be up raw over that. Raw a- actually this week from me actually watching back was actually a, a pretty good show. I'm kind of pissed off that I missed a good raw uh, this week live, but raw was pretty good this week. Um, it wasn't great, it wasn't fantastic, but it was good. It, it it was good. It was a lot better television than what it was, minus the Lavar the Lavar Ball segment and. Um, I'm pretty sure you guys want to hear my brief opinion of it. I did see that at work because at work we have TVs all over the place because I do work for a cable company. So I was watching it when I had time. I was actually on my lunch break when the uh, LeVar Ball segment was appearing. That segment sucked. And and I love the NBA. If you guys know, if you guys watch me, you guys know that I love the NBA. But they did not need to be on Raw. I know. I understand why WWE did it. They tried to do it for ratings. They tried to do it for, for a viewer's push. Obviously... That was that was the highest rate segment of the show. I get that, but at the end of the day, it it wasn't anything that I want to see on TV personally on a Monday Night Raw. You know, what I mean, uh, I I don't want to see it. I mean, but we saw it. 
There's people who loved it. There's people who hate it. So you're one of the either you love the segment or you hate the segment. Now I like Lamar Ball. I like Lonzo Ball. You know what I mean? I think Lonzo's gonna be a, a very good NBA prospect, and he needs to pull a little bit more weight. He's like LeBron James when he first came in. He's like, uh, you know, uh, like uh, Anthony Davis when he first came in with no weight. Once he puts on a little bit of weight, he's gonna be a pretty damn good, pretty, pretty damn good point guard. But we're not talking about NBA here. We're talking about uh, wrestling. I didn't like this for for Monday Night Raw. I like the guys. I just didn't think it was it was good for the show itself. You know, for your product. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, that was a headline by that uh, by that uh, gauntlet match and the Lavar Ball segment. And also as well, we saw Cass attacking Enzo again. We saw Braun Strowman return. We saw Brock Lesnar and Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe putting Brock Lesnar in cocaine and clutch. The so Raw was overall pretty good this week. SmackDown, SmackDown viewership rises with the Money Bank rematch. So SmackDown this week was at 2.6 million viewers. It went up just a smidge from last week's 2.5 million viewers. So it looks like it was like a six uh, six thousand viewer uh, increase overall. So with that being said, I mean. It's basically the same thing. I mean, it went up. It's good that it went up only by six thousand viewers. So, whatever. I mean, I'm not. I'm not really gonna really, you know, hit hard home on the viewership this week with the Raw and SmackDown. SmackDown show was pretty good as well. Um, you know, Carmel winning, winning the Money in the Bank. Um, you know, Baron Corbin versus Sami Zayn. I thought that was a decent match. Um, you know, the Usos in. The New Day, they're going to have a wrap-off next week. I don't know how, how to feel about that, but uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But uh, SmackDown is up to 2.6 million viewers from last week. And that is your Raw and SmackDown viewership from this week. Okay, so we got a news story here on the SummerSlam plans being changed in... A new possible main event going into WrestleMania 34 of John Cena versus Roman Reigns. We will love to see that, right? John Cena versus Roman Reigns. God damn it. I you know what? Well, let's just let's just read here. This is coming from the Wrestling Observer newsletter and Dave Meltzer and saying here that the scheduled main event for SummerSlam and possibly WrestleMania changed a few weeks ago. The only question is. Uh, they did change to. What did they change it to? It was confirmed to us that a few weeks ago, probably just before the Roman Reigns interview, where he wanted, uh, he where he said that he wanted a shot at Brock Lesnar versus Samoa Joe winner, that plans for SummerSlam on August the 20th at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn changed from Lesnar versus Braun Strowman to the main event to Lesnar versus Reigns. That is probably still the main event for the show. But there is an outside chance that it will change since everyone realizes how strong Samoa Joe has gotten over in the Lesnar feud. Originally, Joe's role was to be just the guy to put Lesnar over uh, to set up the bigger match. But it's been hard not to know as to how strong this program is getting over. Lesnar versus Reigns, with Reigns winning the title, has been planned at the main event for, for WrestleMania 2018. Um, in New Orleans. I don't know why I say it like that, but WrestleMania 34. Um, from before this WrestleMania. But if anything, Reigns has has gone from the old John Cena position of being sure wildly at most house shows, um, but booed on television, to being booed heavily at most house shows. The idea uh, could uh, be to pull the trigger on Reigns to win the tower early so they will have the Universal Champion as a regular uh, at, on Raw uh, and house shows as well. Or it could be part of a story where to tell Reigns doesn't win now and builds up to a Mania win. But normally WWE doesn't uh, plan uh, the Mania match this far in advance. The most logical conclusion is... That a Reigns win over Lesnar will lead to a Reigns versus Cena WrestleMania main event. Given the Cena free agent who can work both shows gimmick was introduced at the same time the Lesnar versus Strowman match was changed. If Lesnar loses the title 
that nixes the plans for Lesnar title defenses prior to next year's Mania with both Seth Rollins and Finn Balor, uh, both of which have been teased a few weeks ago. Lesnar versus Strowman could be saved for Mania or Rumble. Did you get all that? Did you get all that? Basically, there's a lot of shit that can happen here. I was an advocate. I was an advocate of having Roman Reigns become Universal Champion early. I, I was an advocate of that. You guys remember that? I said, let Roman Reigns win the title. Even though we hate Roman Reigns, we despise Roman Reigns, we don't like Roman Reigns, have him win the title early. Have him beat Lesnar early because we know what's going to happen. We know it's going to happen. We know it's going to be Lesnar versus Reigns and Reigns taking the title off of Lesnar. We know that's going to happen. So get the inevitable out of the way and have Reigns beat Lesnar. Now, the match versus uh, Cena at WrestleMania 34, that's not what I was really looking forward to because I was assuming that Les I'm sorry, I was assuming that Cena will still be part of the SmackDown brand as an exclusive wrestler. Not, you know, not a free agent per se. Um if it's Cena versus Reigns at WrestleMania. John Cena's the babyface. I don't see anybody cheering for, for, for Roman Reigns unless he turns heel, unless he starts you know going to the heel tactics and be a heel. But oh man, just WWE just doesn't get it. They just don't get it at all. Um, I'm not the biggest Cena fan. I have came around to him over the past few years, but. You're going backwards with this. And the only thing is just to give Roman Reigns another WrestleMania main event. That you're trying to push him down our throats again for another WrestleMania. And possibly have him go over on Cena at WrestleMania. But if anything, I'll have Cena. If I were if I were booking this, I would have Cena win and, and break Ric Flair's title ring. That, that's just me. You know what I mean? Even though it's going to happen. like Just like the whole, you know, just like the whole Roman Reigns thing. Like, oh, he's going to win the Universal title eventually. It's inevitable. It's inevitable that Cena's going to break Ric Flair's title ring. I just came to grips with that. I really did. You know what I mean? I don't want it to happen. I don't think anybody should beat Ric Flair's title ring, but I, I came to grips with it. You know what I mean? And um, I just think that just get over with. Just get both things over with. Get, get Reigns. Winning your title over with and get Cena uh, beating Ric Flair's tie record over with. Just get those over with. Now, the idea that that Braun Strowman can face Lesnar at WrestleMania in a non-title match or maybe Samoa Joe. Now, Samoa Joe is the wild card in all this here because they did not think that Samoa Joe was going to get over as it's, as it's, it was. And I knew this was going to be over because this is one of my dream matches that I wanted to see. I knew Joe from from seeing him in his TNA days and seeing what he's done in NXT over the past year has really, really, really became into his own as, you know, a guy that can carry a few by himself. But you have him and Lesnar with Paul Heyman on the other side talking on the microphone. That is TV gold, and this feud has been the best feud of 2017 thus far. Thus far, and it's only been going on for about less than a month, this feud. So, I honestly think that if Samoa Joe wins, he will hold the title probably up until WrestleMania. If Samoa Joe wins, do I think he's going to win? <sighs> You know it's hard. It's hard at this point. I don't know yet. I like I said. I gotta wait until the the till the go home show to actually make a prediction. This match, I'm leaning towards Lesnar right now because Joe has been gained over on Lesnar every single week. <clears throat> every single week we've been seeing Samoa Joe gain over Lesnar. Lesnar has not really had the advantage over Samoa Joe as of, as of yet. So is that gonna happen? I don't know. Um. But it could be it could be something it could be something that we can watch watch out for. Uh, definitely at Great Balls of Fire between these two. This is gonna be a dynamic match between Samoa Joe and uh, Brock Lesnar. It's gonna be a hard hitting match. We may see blood possibly. You know Lesnar. You know how Lesnar likes to get busted open the hard way. Um, you know what I mean. Or sometimes he blazes up sometimes too. But um, but being as it may. 
you know, it's this is gonna be a dynamic match. This match is going to determine the end of this match, the results of this match is going to determine WrestleMania, pretty much. It may determine WrestleMania. If Joe wins, I think Joe's gonna carry all the way to WrestleMania. He can't beat Brock Lesnar and lose it, you know, in a month to Roman Reigns. I I I, I no. No, I, I wouldn't go for that at all. I would not go for that at all. If Lesnar wins, it depends what happens with Braun Strowman and Braun Strowman and Reigns in the ambulance match, which I think, I believe, he should, he absolutely should beat Roman Reigns, Braun Strowman, but WWE, they like to fuck us, they like to fuck us, they like to fuck over us uh, a lot of times as fans, so Braun Strowman should win. He should win that match. Is he going to win that match? I don't know. By by this report from Dave Meltzer, I, I usually take those with the grand song, even though he is, he does um, get a lot of good information from WWE. Obviously, like, he's fucking Dave Meltzer. He's like the fucking, he's the Jesus Christ of fucking uh, wrestling news scoops. But I'm going to take this with a grand song for now. Um, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But there's a lot of, situations and a lot of scenarios that you can throw at the wall and see if they stick and uh right now i'm not gonna speculate i'm just not going to speculate on that at this time but uh let me know what you think about this whole scenario between possibly roman reigns and john cena at wrestlemania 34 what do you think about that leave me your thoughts down in the comments four more names confirmed for the may young classic and kurt angle will be and WWE 2K18, as if we didn't know that, but that that's an obvious thing. So, uh, Kurt Angle on Twitter uh, put a picture of him in his uh, Team Angle uh, time from, like, 2003, saying, I do a lot of things prematurely, and Tween th th is one of them, but it's true. I'm the official pre-order bonus for at WWE Games, hashtag WWE 2K18, which is obvious, so... I mean, when he was put to the hall, you know, when he was put to the hall of fame, that was the obvious thing that was gonna happen. We knew he was gonna be, he, we knew he was gonna be in WWE 2K18. We knew he was gonna be the pre-order bonus. It was just, it was just obvious. My thing is, who's gonna come back to WWE this year? Who's gonna be, be the pre-order, uh, the pre-order bonus for next year? I don't know. I don't know at this point because they're starting to run out of legends at this point that they can actually put in. Uh, X Pac, like, what the fuck? No. Um. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see and see on how that goes. Maybe Owen Hart. I mean, if WWE can strike gold with Owen Hart and get him into Hall of Fame, I think he'll be a great pre-order bonus. His first WWE game since WWE Attitude in 1999, the game that I used to own. I can go get the fucking copy of the game right now. I gotta sit over here in my fucking video game case, my uh, N64 video game case. Yeah. At WWF Attitude. Like, that was the last game that, that Owen Hart was in officially and uh, at the beginning of the game it says it says um in tribute or in loving memory of owen hart just fuck man just ha ah, crazy 1999 was a crazy year um but yeah yeah he's gonna be in wwe 2k18 kurt angle and i can't wait to play with him too i can't wait to see his interest can't wait to see his moves set the way that they have his moves set, his attire everything i wonder if they're gonna have 1999 angle in there or like 2003 Angle 2004, Angle when he goes bald, so. Can't wait for that. Can't wait for that. A May Young Classic update, and we're going to, uh, you know, get um, go over some more information about that in a moment, too, as well. Um, but WWE today has announced four more names for the May Young Classic. Uh, Kari Sane, which is formerly known as Kari Hojo. So she's going to be in there. Hopefully she gets to use her fucking elbow drop, which would be fucking great if she gets to use her elbow drop. Uh, Dakota Kai, Piper Niven, and Bianca Belair. So those are four more names that is going to be involved in the um, in the Minion Classic. So there you go. So that being said, there we also have. Well, I'm trying to get some more news for you guys here. I got I got some information here on uh, some NXT stuff here. So uh, bear with me for one moment. 
Okay, here we go. I found it. Because I, I lost it for a second. And, uh... Found it here. Okay, there we go. So, William Regal and Triple H want former WWE NXT star to return. Okay. WWE has brought back several wrestlers since the most recent brand extension, with some, like Jinder Mahal, receiving a, a far bigger push uh, than ever before, while others, like Rhino, has mostly been a uh, lower card fo uh, fodder. fodder. What the fuck? I don't know what the fuck that is. But Rhino has, has won the uh, SmackDown Tag Team titles. With WWE to sign more male wrestlers, uh... In the fall after the May Young Classic, there has been internal discussion about which former wrestlers to reach out about a return in addition to some younger talent the company is looking at they've never signed before. One top name that has caught WWE's attention is Sammy Callahan, who departed the company in late 2015 after an uneventful run at Solomon Crow. Callahan requested his release to prove himself in hopes that he'll be back one day. William Ringo in particular has uh, spoken highly of Callahan on, and he is on Triple H's radar as a hot act on the independence he wants to bring in back at some point. It may be 2018 though, by, by the time an offer is made, Triple H usually looks to restock the NXT clipboard with the existing independent name early in the year, where he knows NXT is about to be rated by Raw and SmackDown after WrestleMania a couple months ap after, which is a great, great business gesture to keep NXT fresh after every year. So, you're going to be looking at, pretty much, you're going to be looking at Sammy Callahan, we're, we could be looking at uh, Kenny Omega to be coming in, um, who's still not under a contract, um, I'm going to say it once. And, and, and I'm going to say it again, the villain, Marty Skrull, he has not, still not been signed. And, 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 July is, and July is tomorrow. At the end of July, he, it's, the, these rumors might start be coming up pretty fast and furious. I'm, I'm telling you, he has not been signed. And there's no information of him being signed back to New Japan or uh, a Ring of Honor. Now, now New Japan is going to have their uh, G1 Climax I guess that's a part of the tournament here uh, in Los Angeles. Uh, but tomorrow and, um, what's tomorrow? Tomorrow, Saturday. Tomorrow and Sunday. So, I don't think he's in the tournament, though. I don't think he's in there. I don't think I remember seeing his name. No, he's not He's not in Block A or Block B, no. So, he may be there wrestling. So, um, he may be there wrestling, but I don't think he's actually going to be in... He's not gonna be in that tournament though, but I think he'd be there wrestling in some some fashion. But uh, basically, basically, long story short, with that, I truly, truly, truly hope that he will be signed by WWE because I like to, you know, I, the more talent the better, the more talent the better. But but he's a, he's a very good talent, and I definitely would like to see him in WWE someday. Um, also, as well with that, if I go back to my report here. Um, as noted, Adam Cole is on track to debut at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn, while another former RH star in Bobby Fish debuted at last Friday's NXT tapings. As of this writing, it is an unknown whether or not Fish has signed a contract or just appearing on a per-match basis, much like Samoa Joe, James Story, and Eric Young did. Fish ta Fish's tag team partner, Kyle O'Reilly, called Kyle O'Reilly, is also on WWE's radar, which we've already been telling. Red Dragon. If Red Dragon comes in to NXT, that'll be great. Another tag team, because the tag team division on NXT is sorely, sorely needing more tag teams. So, if Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish could be together as Red Dragon, it doesn't have to be as Red Dragon, be as another name. It doesn't matter. We, we will know them as Red Dragon. Um, that will be fucking uh, phenomenal. I, I would just say that that will be... Uh, fucking phenomenal if that can happen. You know, I would definitely, definitely would, uh, would be game to see that, of uh, seeing Kyle O'Reilly back involved with, um, uh, Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish, not back involved, but coming involved with WWE in X T. 
That is the news, guys. I don't have anything else. That that was just a little bit of news for you guys. This is going to be about a 30 minute video. Um, but I want to go to my boy and bay of the week. And this week of wrestling. My boy of the week is a man who just doesn't give a fuck. He does not give a fuck. And their match at Great Balls of Fire is going to be great. And you know what? It actually, actually, I'm, I'm going to do two boys of the week. I'm going to go with Braun and Braun Strowman and Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe, for the obvious reasons that I talked about earlier, just just getting uh, Brock Lesnar cold kid a clutch, making him look red as a fucking apple. Great stuff. As far as Braun Strowman is concerned, taking out Roman Reigns, throwing him into the ambulance, and you know, because they're going to have an ambulance match at Great Balls of Fire as well. Great Balls of Fire is going to to be a pretty good pay per view. And I can't believe I'm saying that. The name still sucks. But I, I said this. I was like, well, what as a troll? You know, Great Balls of Fire is going to be one of the greatest WWE pay per views of all time. Now, I'm not saying that. That's going to be one of the greatest of all time. I'm just saying that we thought this pay per view was going to fucking suck. And this pay per view on paper is going to be the best pay per view that WWE has put on um, from the brand split this year so far. I do like Elimination Chamber, though, so I don't want, want us to forget about Elimination Chamber, even though that was so long ago. Elimination Chamber was a great pay-per-view. Um, and Great Balls of Fire could be a good pay-per-view as well. But um, Braun Strowman and Samoa Joe are both my boys of the week. And my Bay of the Week, minus Dana Brooke. Minus Dana Brooke, Dana Botch. Minus Dana Botch is the entire... WWE Women's Division. Everybody. Minus Dana Botch. Raw, SmackDown, NXT. You all main event it. Your shows. Your respective shows. The Gauntlet match on Raw, which is pretty good. The Money Bank ladder match on SmackDown, which was better than the um, than the one from... I forget the name of the fucking event now. It wasn't Backlash. Money in Bank. Jesus Christ. How the fuck I forget that? Hey, the Money in Bank ladder match happened at one pay per view? Uh, uh. I'm, I'm, I'm tired, guys. I just woke up because I work at 3 three p.m. and I just woke up to get this video for you guys. So, so yeah, that's why. But anyway, um, but yeah, yeah, the uh, it was better than the match at Money in the Bank pay per view. I, it was, it was a little bit better. It wasn't great, but it, you know, but uh, it, it was good. I think all the leads worked hard in the match. They all worked very hard in, in uh, both matches. So. Uh, but it was better than the one at uh, the Money Bay pay-per-view where Carmella, well, she won both of them. And the NXT, first ever NXT last woman standing match between Nikki Cross and Asuka. Fucking great match. Match of the week. Match of the week in WWE was that match. That match was fucking great. And it shows you what two women can really do in a match like that. Fucking great. The the double table spot at the end, the superplex off the ladder through the Adelsa table. Great stuff from Asuka and Nikki Cross. But there are the, the whole entire women's division, with the exception of Dana Botch, are, are they are the Bay of the Week. This Week in Wrestling gives us to nine years ago where WWE presented Night of Champions. And uh, from the American Airlines Arena in Dallas, uh, Texas, which is uh, uh, which is kind of ironic because Great Balls of Fire is going to be from the American Airlines Arena in Dallas, Texas, where 16,000 people were in attendance and 273,000 homes purchased the event on pay-per-view. And this is up from, uh, from uh, 247,000 homes for the 2007 edition. So for the 2008 version of Night of Champions, John Morrison and the Miz defeated Finley and Hornswoggle. Oh my god, I forgot about that match. It's to retain the WWE Tag Team Championship. Legacy of Cody Rose and Ted DiBiase defeated Hardcore Holly. Uh, oh yeah, this win Legacy was actually formed here. That's right. Ted DiBiase's uh, debut match. Forgot about that. For Totally forgot about that. Yeah, and they, yeah, I forgot about that. So, Holly had won the uh, the title with Rose, but Rose turned on, on him at the event. That's where Legacy was formed. Ah, okay, that's right, that's right, that's right. Kofi Kingston defeated Chris Jericho 
to win the WWE Intercontinental Championship. Matt Hardy, he wasn't broke at the time, defeated Charles Grell to retain the, the United States Championship. Mick James defeated Katie Lee Burchill to retain the WWE Women's Championship. Mark Henry defeated Kane and Big Show to win the, the ECW Championship. Edge defeated Batista to retain the Royal Heavyweight Championship. And Triple H defeated John Cena to retain the WWE Championship. That was this week in wrestling for WWE United Champions 2008. All right, guys, I'm going to go and get out of here. A little bit of a short podcast today. We're a little bit over 30 minutes here. I mean, there was some news here, but it wasn't really a, really a lot of groundbreaking news here today. Um, just some interesting points from Dave Meltzer on the Wrestling News, News Observer newsletter for the um, possibly John Cena and Roman Reigns at uh, WrestleMania 34. But guys, let me know what you thought about everything what we talked about here today down below in the comment section. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Be sure to follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter, guys, so you guys keep up to date when I am going live. So I can give you guys channel updates as well. Uh, and like the Facebook page where both links are down below. And as it, guys, that's it for me. I will see you guys later. Peace out.